Hey everyone. So this is a video on how to properly maintain your Emacs configuration. If this is your first Emacs install, you'll have a new folder called .emacs.d. If this isn't though, like if you followed the instructions in my slides to make a .emacs file, we're going to start afresh and delete the .emacs file or you can adapt what I'm saying to your configurations. Right? Okay. So. I still have my .emacs files, and now I don't. So I'm doing this with you. I promise. So let's open up dot. Uh, let's open up Emacs. Now, why would you want to deviate from a plain .emacs? Let's open up a package in the listing to see why. Meta X package list packages cool so as you can see I've reverted back to an ELPA only repository so I'm really doing everything with you guys I promise so let's look at a package called undo tree Go ahead and install it. It's a really neat package that sees your undo history like a tree and will undo and will undo your um, edits based off of that tree. So okay, cool. It's now installed, or is it? If you look down here, there's an installation part of this help file that says that you need to make sure this file is saved in your load path and you need to make sure it has this line and that line and optionally do this thing. Okay, so that's only like one, two lines max in any configuration. However, imagine, imagine 10, 20 of these files with little edits that you need to do like that. It's easier to make a whole bunch of tiny files that have configuration details for that file specifically than to put all of these into one large file. So what we're going to do is we're going to install these things modularly. That way we can better debug things when they break and so it's less cluttered when we do need to make a edit to the main configuration. So what we're going to do now is we're going to make a config file specifically for undo tree. I'm going to switch buffers to the um, compile um, to the compile news over here on the left. So control X O. Now what I usually do is I put all of my um, detail configuration in files into a specific subfolder within the .emacs.d. So meta x make directory. So let's get back down to .emacs.d. What can you name your configuration detail file? Anything. As long as you know what it is, then that's all that matters. Um, and as long as it doesn't conflict with any folders that are currently existing. Um, I usually opt to put it as a Lisp folder, although you can just call it a make config or a package config or whatever you want to name it because it'll make sense to you at least. So as long as you know what it's called, do what you do. Um, okay, so I'm going to make a directory called lisp inside of the .emacs.d and that's what this looks like and I'm going to hit enter and it's already made because that's a really quick thing. So now what? 
I'm going to stay over here on the left side so I can go edit a file inside of that Lisp directory. So control X F. Let's go back down to Lisp. Now I'm going to make a config file specifically for undo tree mode. Um, name it whatever you want as long as you know that it has to do with undo tree. So I'm going to do undo tree config.el. Hit enter. Since it doesn't since it doesn't exist, it'll make a new file. Now let's put in what I want to do so I can configure it to work with Emacs. It says to do require undo tree. And then I like it when it undoes at the global scale. So we'll do that as well when I can spell. Cool. Um yeah, that looks good. If you want to do the optional middle bit, it's really easy. Meta x byte compile file. It'll ask you where the file is. And it'll be inside of Elpa because it's an Elpa file. Um, look for the undo tree directory. You'll want the actual directory. And you auto and you'll hit that for undo dash tree dot el and hit enter and it'll do that. Although it just took up the buffer that I was using, but that's okay, we can switch buffers by doing control XB and then hitting enter. If there's a specific buffer that you want to go to though, you just type in the name of the buffer as you see here. You can see the list of buffers when you're at this mode and then you hit tab. So yeah. Uh and now I don't want to see that anymore. So we can do control G to quit commands. Control G will quit any command that you're about to do. If you're a Vimmer, it's like escape. Okay, so that's done with. I'm going to do control X control S. And now we want to put in the custom file for the Emacs configuration. So what we're going to do is control X, control F, go back up one directory to .emacs.d. And the name of this file is really important, so make sure you spell it right. I-N-I-T dot E-L. So it's an init file. So hit enter. Now what you want to do now is put in the following code. Add to list load path dot emacs dot d lisp. That says that from Everywhere that I'm allowed to load from, specific add in the Lisp subdirectory. Loading is um, an equivalent to import, like in Java or Python. So that now means that I can load the undo tree config in the Lisp subdirectory. Right? Cool. So let's save that. So that's cool. You just configured you just configured Emacs. So now let's hook in Marmalade and Melpa. Um so you follow the same procedure. You go find a file in Lisp and name your p name your file for packages like Marmalade and Melpa something so I'm gonna write in my packages so in case I need to do things extra besides putting in for Marmalade and Melpa so 
mypackages.el. It's a new file. And now I'm just going to write in the code that I said to write in for the slides. Require package package initialize add to list package archives marmalade you might notice that I'm writing it differently spaced than I had before it's because Lisp does not require its white space to be in any particular way. You could put everything in one line if you so wished. I just wouldn't recommend it. So yeah, it's just, it's a little easier to read it like this, especially since I don't really intend on having much else in this file. Right, right. So now let's go back to the init.el file and hook in this package. I'm going to throw the load command for that above undo tree. That way, there will never be a point in time that I'll need marmalade and melpa and it won't be there for a particular package because it's the first thing loaded. So my packages.el and then we'll save that. And we'll close it because it will need to because this is something that needs to be closed and reopened. This isn't the case for most Emacs packages. It'll it's just the case for some. In general you can edit your configuration and it'll just do it. So that's closing. Let's open it back up again. Huh. I think I made a mistake. Um, package archive. Well, there's only one place that does package archives. And I can't spell. <laughs> okay, so let's put that in. Try that again. That's embarrassing. Open that up again. Okay, so. I've forgotten S. Remember to spell things. So let's make sure that importing packages works. MetaX package list packages. Cool. So as you can see, you have Marmalade and Melpa open to you again. You can go and install Geyser if you so wish. Um, I don't think Geyser needs. Oh, actually, let me go check that. By the way, you really should look at some of these files. They will make your life a lot easier. In some of these, it's just it's fun to install. Uh, I think I m missed it. Oh, there's a Sauron package. LB and G. Uh, as if you can see this, there is a marmalade and a melpa version of Geyser. It doesn't matter; they're the same because marmalade and melpa are still different listings, so sometimes they'll overlap. Okay. Yeah, it's so it doesn't need anything. So you can simply hit install for this one. So that 
looks like that's the end of this video. You can now do whatever you need. Now you can do whatever you need to do to configure Emacs so it's better for you. There's a Gandalf. I mean, I just saw that there was a Gandalf color theme. There's a whole bunch of other things. I know people who run their Emacs, who run um, their web clients and their IRC and email clients right out of Emacs. Some people just live in Emacs. Um, which, you know, that doesn't have to be you. But I'm saying there is a very large realm of possibility that you can do when building up. So this methodology should allow you to debug any mistakes that happen in the files more easily and make it easier for you to just simply hook in new packages as they need new configurations. Okay, so remember, a good dev environment is always one that feels like home, so be sure to ask questions on Piazza so we can help you out. Uh, let's see. Bye, guys.